Okay, so we invited T.C. Curie. So she is a journalist as at the New Stack. Who have ever read articles on the New Stack? In the room? Yeah, some people. Uh, it's a great, great resource, right? Uh, the New Stack that I own, right? And I think the New Stack dot com, right? Something. Um, yeah. So and we wanted to have her um, uh, to have T.C. here. Uh, she has a 25 years of software uh, engineering background, and she's also a poet, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was, that's a mix actually that, that you apply to journalism, right? You write a lot about service meshes, microservices, Kubernetes, and all their technologies. Yeah. But you see a lot of things, like you really see a lot of things coming, writing about all this stuff, and we really wanted to have you, because you've seen with Wasm and Wasi, right? Uh, we should always be learning at some point, right? Uh, the future is closer every day, right? And so we're really glad to have you there. So to finish this talk with an enlightened moment, I will ask you to make a warm applause for TC. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm not going to read any poetry, so you can relax. Um, and we're going to go from the very specific to the really general. So y'all have been here for a couple days. You've been listening to people. Um, just, and I've just lost my notes, yay but you've been listening to people who are changing the world. And y'all are changing the world, because you're in this. But you can't rest on your laurels, because things are happening so fast that you need to look to the future and figure out what's happening so that you can start setting yourself up to move into those spaces. And I was sharing this talk with a geek friend of mine, and he suggested an alternative title. So for the past four years now, I've been a freelance writer. And I write mostly for the new stack and podcast, but I do provide content for a variety of mostly startups. Um, and I talk to people who are on the cutting edge of tech. So what I'm doing today is talking about industry trends. And then I'm going to give you some specifics. Because when I talk to these people, I always end by saying, what can a developer or an engineer do to set themselves up for success for the next three to five years? Because you really can't go much past that. Um, by the way, I'm not going to read these quotes to you, but I might refer to them. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that work futurist is not a title that has been around for very long. We don't know what's coming up. And as writers and consumers of API, you're in the midst of this huge gestalt shift that's been happening in our industry. So by adopting an attitude of learning, it's not just like, I need to learn something for my next step, but it's always be learning. And by adopting that attitude, you set yourself up to be flexible for when the ne next shift happens. Because as they say, constant change is here to stay. And just a reminder that when Java hit the scene in 1996, it was the hip happening cool language on the block, and everybody was flocking to it. Um, and several of the folks that I've interviewed have told me that an added benefit of learning new languages and platforms is that employers really like to see that employees or prospective employees have the attitude of learning. So I love this quote. Whoops. I'm not used to the clickers. I need to move my thumb away. Um, but be fearless was the last quote. You're going to feel uncomfortable when you start learning something new, and that's to be expected. So next, I'm going to talk about six trends that are happening right now. You've been listening to people talk about these things for the past couple days. Um, if you don't see these things happening in your company, you will. Um, if you're in a shop that still deploys annually or even quarterly, expect that to change. Um, and just a note before I dive into this, when I first started at the new stack, <laughs> I was really super overwhelmed because there was so much that was new and all these new companies and is this product a platform or is it a language and is this other company a competitor or a partner and where does it fit in the stack and um, in the interest of sanity, <laughs> I decided to focus, and I suggest you do the same. I just want to point out, I'm not expecting you to learn everything about all of these. So let me try the pointer. Woo! Okay, so um, clockwise. 
the industry trends are open source, data, um, continuous everything, security, teamwork, and machine learning. So if you are not contributing to open source, then get D to GitHub. Every company I talk to uses open source components for at least some of their stack. So start spending time in there and build up a portfolio. I asked Steve Herod, who is a VC at General Catalyst, it's like, how do you find the engineers to staff your startup? And he told me they go through GitHub repos. So I cannot state this strongly enough, open source is critical for your career growth. Now GitHub makes it easy. There's this page, which is great for new contributors. So next up, let's talk about data. Data persistence, data fabrics, data ops, data governance, data mining, data lakes, data hubs that we just heard about, data on the edge, SQL databases, graph databases, GraphQL databases, and no SQL databases. Um, so, it's lots of data. I keep this chart um, from Wikipedia on my desk for reference. Um, two years ago, I wrote about Ancestry.com, and at that time, they were running nine petabytes of data through their system every day. And now I'm hearing people talk about this product, this product is going to scale to exabytes. I mean, just, I can't even conceive of that amount of data. And that's kind of the point. So with data at this scale, it necessitates a shift in how companies are structured. And so you hear, at least I hear over and over again, all companies are data companies. <clears throat> but it's not just about the data, or the company with the most data wins. It has to be useful. It's about data agility. And Jack's advice, Jack, this is Jack Norris from MathR, and he said for individual developers, you need to adopt a data first approach in your own coding, and this will let you leverage your own productivity and the effectiveness of your products. And Niha Narkeda, um, Apache Kafka is a platform that's used for building data pipelines, and she's a co-creator of it and in the last, ha, has spent the last two years um, modernizing it so it's completely cloud native, which I thought was pretty cool. So she talked about three general areas in which you can invest in if you're interested in doing more with data. So data science is about how you make data useful for the business, both internally and externally. Operations modules are where you can use data to predict trends. And engineering, let's put, put this down. Um, engineering is where you can build machine learning. And that feeds us into continuous everything. So we have blown past continuous integration and continuous delivery. And now we are in this world of continuous everything. And in this new world, everything you do will be in relationship to others. Waterfalls are drying up. There's no more writing my code and throwing it over the wall to QA and letting them deal with it. That is all over. Everybody's connected. So Tom O'Neill told me that wherever you sit in your company, expect to be more involved with the data going forward, which echoes Jack's advice about data first. And if you're interested in a place to get started, this is a fabulous book. Um, Nicole Bosgren, Jazz Humble, and Jean Kim have written a lot of books between them, even individually and as teams. And they're all full of great advice and backed by really serious research. So security. So we just had like a huge talk about security, which was equally parts fascinating and horrifying, right? Um, and there have been other talks about security, and this is definitely a huge trend, as the fact that we have been, I've got a quote about this in a second, but let me just say this from Marianne, who's the um, 
chief security officer at Oracle. She said that in the past, security used to be ignored by pretty much everybody except banks. So obviously I need to update that <laughs> um, because they're obviously not paying attention to their mobile apps. But <laughs> security, her point is security is more critical than it has ever been because there are so many access points. And it's not just your car or your toaster or your fridge, but it's all of the APIs. And so this historical attitude about we'll think about security later, it's just no longer success, um, acceptable. So in terms of your career, the technical debt that is being built or has been built, if you like fixing things, it's a great place to look, to look into. So Masha Sadova has been in the security industry for years. And she says that we have made engineers uncomfortably numb because we've told them that they need to be concerned about this, but we haven't told them what to do. So she's created this game called Hacker's Mind. And it's so cool, they go into a company and they teach people hacker tricks. And then they give you a set of data and then your job is part of the game. You win the game by hacking into the data. The kick is that they bring their own API or AI um, module, they pull data from the company, so each individual engineer is trying to hack the data that they work with every day, using social media and phishing techniques and all kinds of stuff like that. And so her advice for individual devs who may not want to get into security per se, but the OWASP website, has this like great list of the top 10 proactive controls. These are top 10 things that you can do with your code. So this is so simple. Um, so anyways, OWASP website, give it, a, give it a look. So teamwork. Okay, now I'm not even touching anything. Can we turn this off? So teamwork is not working in groups. It's not just a bunch of people working in groups. Atlassian spent, oh. Atlassian spent a couple years researching term teams internal to Atlassian, and they came up with this, which is, there are no bullshit guide to unleashing your team's potential. And it's full of plays, which are formally known as, you know what, I'm gonna stop this for a second. I apologize. So, team exercises. Um, they include things like spinning our wheels, conflicting priorities, and my personal favorite, which is leadership deficit disorder. So I wanna talk for a minute about what I'm calling the 138% advantage. So what if your company could do one thing to increase its annual revenue by 19% a year relative to your competitors. Pretty cool, let's do that, right? So 19% is a competitive advantage. Over five years, that amortizes to, or compounds rather, to 138%. Now one thing is diversity. And it's not just one study, it's well documented now that diverse companies earn more money. Some studies show that the difference can be as high as 35%. Now that compounds to 448%, and that's annual, right? So start thinking about being in a diverse company. Uh, 
as a solid career move. It's not just a nice to have anymore. So I love this quote, and I use it whenever I can. Um, and Aubrey is not uh, talking here just about gender and color. It's about physical ability and neurodiversity and culture and age and size and background. And the research from Atlassian and Google shows that teams are more effective when they are diverse and when all the members feel like their contributions are valid. So just like teamwork is not equal to working in teams, companies are not diverse just because they check off some boxes. So as an individual in ear, engineer, strive to make people feel like they're welcome at your party. And one last note on this, the world has changed a lot in the last several years in terms of having access to just learning coding and other technology. There are free online classes and tons of other resources that make it possible to teach yourself to code. So be open to all the different people from all the different backgrounds and everything they bring with them. And just a note, uh, I interviewed the woman who developed the platform that Red Hat runs on. She's a history major. <laughs> so much like security, we keep telling you that you should be more diverse, you should make people more welcoming, but how do you do that? And so the first thing I suggest is follow better allies. Um, this is their pinned tweet, and now they've got a book where they gathered all the tweets into a book. These are small, actionable items that you can do on a daily basis that make a really huge difference in making people feel welcome and included. So the last trend, before we move into specifics, is machine learning. And I recently saw a tweet that said, you, if you want to tell the difference between machine, machine learning and AI, look at the language it's written in. If it's written in Rust, it's machine learning. If it's AI, it's written in PowerPoint. So most AI is just conceptual at this point. Most of what's happening in businesses is really machine learning. Jack told me that Google has a white paper called Machine Learning, the High Interest Credit Card of Technical Debt. He said because it's so new, the way machine learning is being built right now is creating technical debt, and they know that, but it's so new that it just keeps happening. So from a career stability standpoint, machine learning is really cool because you can build it, and then you'll be able to go back and fix the technical debt when they figure out that that's what they need to do. So in terms of where to start, start learning about machine learning, I had the great pleasure to talk to Ted Dunning, who is, an, he's been working on AI for decades, and he's currently the chief application architect at MapR. And he told me that this book would be a really good place to start learning about machine learning. It's open source on the website, the MapR website, and his co-author, Ellen Friedman, is a chief technologist at the Apache Software Foundation. And they've written a whole bunch of books together. Pretty much anything they write is kick-ass. So, I've talked about these six industry trends, and some of them, like open source security, teamwork, and inclusion, you'll just want to add to your skill set no matter what. Um, but think about the other trends, like data, continuous everything, security, and machine learning, and what sparks your interest and make you want to learn more. So go there. So, Taking a deep breath, I'm going to talk a little bit about platforms and languages. So specifically, what can you learn? So um, we start up on the top left with Docker and AWS, so containers. Kubernetes, an orchestration tool for Kubernetes. On the right side, you've got the Apache tribes, the Apache Kafka, which is a streaming platform. Spark is an analytics engine, and Hadoop is a framework that allows distributed processing across clusters of computers. 
And TensorFlow is an open source library for large scale machine learning. And I want to do a shout out to Lennox. Um, when I, s I spoke with Tanika, actually, my interview with her is went live today. So it's up on the TNS website. I was absolutely astonished at what the extent that Linux runs our world. Um, and I love this, that you can't really automate infrastructure. So as a long-term career goal, Linux is really, really solid. And by the way, Women in Linux is open to everyone. And because Tamika is self-taught, it's very welcoming to newbies. And they've got uh, job boards and career advice and all kinds of stuff. So if you're to any interest in Linux, check them out. So Go is a little bit larger here. We move into languages. And that's become, it's become the de facto cloud native language. Python is for data web, desktop, and increasingly machine learning. Um, and Rust we've already talked about. There's SQL and no SQL, and I'm running out of time, so I'll just move through this. And so um, a couple of quotes about Bash, which I hadn't ever really thought of. And I just love this last one, which is true facts, everything at the bottom of all the turtles is a Bash script that's initializing machines. So I thought I'd leave you with a few resources. So when you've recovered from the conference <laughs> and want to start exploring, you know, meetups are an awesome way to learn more without committing much time. If you don't know if you want to learn Rust or Python, uh, attend a couple meetups and see what the communities are like. And Udemy and Coursera provide free classes. And just a reminder that everything you need to take your next step is available somewhere. Twitch is live streaming coding sessions now. It's crazy. So whatever you are wanting to learn, the answers are out there. So thank you. Hi, TC. Uh, Go back there. Yeah, sorry for the remote thing. Yeah. Do you have any questions? I keep losing. Oh, no? just oh, I'm, I'm coming up on a thousand um, followers on Twitter. So if you all could follow me, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so any question at all to start, right? Yeah, I have a question actually. In question, I have a question for you, TC. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, so, how in your journey of always learning, how do you decide, you know, how much do you invest, you know, in, in specific technology, right? Do you need to be driven by uh, the market? Do you need to be driven by passion? How do you mix both if you have to? I'd say you start with passion. You know, um, an engineer friend of mine said, go to GitHub and find something that piques your interest and go there because whatever you're gonna learn, at some point, it's gonna be a slog, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's gonna be a slog. So if you have passion for it, if you're really interested, and that's what I was saying, it's like, look at these industry trends. Which one sparks for you? It's like, ooh, that, yeah, okay, follow that. Yeah, and how then, if you follow your passion, how do you match that with the market, right? Well. To pay the bills. If you, well, I mean, if you're at an employer and they say, we want you to learn this, then, you know, go learn that. Um, but these trends, if you just pick one, you're going to be solid for a while. And, you know, the whole gestalt of always be learning is you're here at conferences, so you're already ahead of the game. Um, and just keep an eye out at what's happening and what's happening on the forefront of things. Yeah. Okay. So... I want to say thank you very much. You all are my very first technical conference talk. Yeah. Thank so you, thank TC. You. Thank you.